Hey, what's going on everyone? Today we're gonna be testing out the DYU FF500 folding fat tire e-bike. Now, I don't know if that's why they call it an FF for folding fat tire or fat tire folding or folding frame. Who knows? But anyway, this is the FF500 bike. You can see here it has a really nice low step over height. I'll put that measurement up here on the screen because I actually forgot to measure that one. <laughs> Can't remember it all, guys, but I'll measure it and I'll put that measurement up there in the screen. And I do want to disclose that DYU did send me this bike to test out and review for all of you. But as you know, in all my videos, we're going to put this thing through a test, take it up some hills, see what kind of power it has, what kind of speed it has and how it performs. So let's go over the specs and features real quick on the bike. Up here on the handlebars, you have a nice set of double locking hand grips. They are rubberized. I actually do like these grips. Right here, you have your control pad for controlling your pedal assist levels and turning your bike on and off. You have a cheap little bell right there. Over on the right hand side, you have a thumb throttle and a seven speed Shimano shifter, which leads down to the 14 to 28 freewheel in the rear of the bike. This bike is using a Shimano tourney derailleur coming up the KMC chain to a 46 tooth chain ring in the front and a set of folding pedals. On the front of the bike for comfort, you do have a spring suspension with a lockout. And on the left-hand side, there is a preload adjuster. Now this bike is powered by a 14 amp hour battery that's inside the frame right here. Now it does say on the battery that it is LG cells. So maybe it is. And that 14 amp hour battery is using an 18 amp hour controller that's in the frame here to power the 500 watt rear geared hub motor, which is made by DAAO, DAO, I guess it's called, but we're gonna be testing that out for sure and seeing what kind of power it has. It has a nice rack on the back where you can carry 55 pounds of your gear. And it comes with this airbag seat, which is pretty cool. I actually have one of these that I got from Vitalin, but this seat here airs up in the center here. There's an air pump if you want it stiffer, or you can hit the air release button to make it softer. Pretty cool when I actually like that seat. Not quite sure if it's better than the Cloud 9 or not, but really cool technology there to have an air seat that you can pump up as you're out riding and let the air out if needed. And it is more comfortable in my opinion than most other seats that come on e-bikes from the factory. So that is nice that they at least give you a decent cushioned seat here. Oh, and as of me currently filming this video, I'm not sure how long this sale is going to last, but this bike is currently on sale for $1,100, and it says that it's originally $1,800. Now, I don't know about that. That seems really high, so not sure how they go about their sale prices, but currently it's $1,100, and I'll put a link down below if I can get any coupon to save you guys some money. So make sure you check out the link below and it will be an affiliate link. So if you use that link, I will make a small commission at no extra cost to you, but that's what helps support the channel and helps me keep creating these videos for all of you. So let's get back to the overview. For stopping power, this bike's using a set of non-branded brakes coming down to a pair of 180 millimeter rotors. Now we're gonna be testing those as well, but I'm glad that they used 180 millimeter rotors. So far, I haven't seen any problems with them, but we're gonna get down some long hills and test them. Now for charging the bike up, there's a charge port here on the side where you could charge the battery in the bike, or you could take the battery out of the bike and charge it, which is really nice. It has a nice heavy duty kickstand in the rear that's adjustable up and down. That's nice to see. And it does come with a set of included plastic fenders for both the front and the rear of the bike. Now for safety, this bike has an integrated light on the front. However, on the back of the bike, there is no rear tail light. It's just a red reflector. That would have been nice to see an actual built-in back brake light or at least a tail light so the drivers would be able to see you if you're riding late at night. That's always nice to see for safety. So hopefully they can maybe add that in the future. Now, as I said earlier, this bike is folding. It has a nice latch here to open up the frame and it does have a latch on the handlebars here however i didn't really care much for the locking feature on this latch it's just a plastic thing that slides around and that's normal i have that on a lot of my other bikes but this one doesn't seem to want to stay latched so what i did was i took a piece of velcro that secures cables and i looped it around there to make sure that that doesn't come undone when you're riding because this doesn't seem to want to stay in place even if you tighten up this screw it doesn't seem to stay in place just because of the taper on the handlebars now the maximum loading capacity on this bike is 300 and 30 pounds and the bike itself weighs 68 pounds with that internal battery now the battery weighs about 7.6 pounds so you could take that battery out and it puts it down just low enough 
to where you can put this thing on most bike racks that are rated for at least 60 pounds. You could take the seat and the battery out and be below that limit. To adjust the height of the rider, the seat can be adjusted from 35 inches from the ground up, that's the minimum, up to 39 and a half inches for the maximum seat height, and the handlebars can be adjusted up and down as well a few inches. So now if you guys noticed and watched a lot of my other videos, you'll notice that the display in the center is the exact same display as the electric bikes. Really nice and bright, easy to see. But again, we'll test out the features and see what you can and can't do with that display. So stick around. Oh, and if you like this content, please consider subscribing and sticking around forever, checking out some of my other videos if you love learning about e-bikes and other things. So I think that's pretty much all the specs and features of the bike, the main specs and features. One thing I do want to mention about folding this bike, uh, when, when you get it, it comes unfolded, pretty much just like you see here. You just have to put the front wheel on, slide the handlebars in, put the seat post in, put the pedals on, and put the front fender and front light on. Pretty easy assembly. However, when I went to fold it, some of the wires seemed a little bit tight. It seems like every time I get a bike that comes not folded, that is a folding bike, usually the wires are a little tight. I didn't really have to take anything apart to fix that, but when you fold it, just be cautious and make sure that the wires aren't really tight there when you fold it, because you could push these down in as you fold it, and it gives you enough slack to be able to fold it easily. But you do have to push these down in, and then when you unfold it back to this position, you kinda gotta give a little tug to pull some of the wires back out, and it makes it easier to fold and unfold that way. Just keep an eye on those wires whenever you fold it, and you shouldn't have a problem. All right, everyone, we're gonna go up the hill that I go up in all my tests first. Got a fully charged battery. We're gonna go up in pedal assist three, full throttle and see if we can make it now with this being a 500 watt bike i'm not quite sure it will or not with just throttle and pedal assist three is the highest pedal assist level that you could put it in there is three levels of assist one two and three with three being the high, highest so okay not too bad so far seven miles an hour and it's showing 17 amps of current wow six miles an hour Hmm, very impressive. For, for a 500 watt motor bike, wow, it never dropped below six miles per hour. I actually can't believe that. I didn't know what to expect because most of the hay bikes won't make it up that hill with just throttle. And even the new hay bike uh, Tyson that I reviewed was a 750 watt bike and it didn't make it up that hill with just throttle. So wasn't quite sure what to expect. The electric 3.0 made it up that hill all the way but it dropped to four miles per hour and the 2.0 it may have made it but i stopped it because the motor didn't sound that great at four, when it hit four miles an hour and was getting ready to drop the three but this maintained no less than six miles an hour so that's that's pretty good that's actually about the same as what the uh g-force t42 did if i if i can recall it was around six miles per hour, I believe. So pretty good for a 500 watt bike for as far as torque goes. So now let's test out the brakes going down this steep hill. So we're gonna check out them non-branded brakes. No squeaks and squeals so far. And this is right out of the box, guys. I mean, I did some adjustments and sprayed the rotors down with uh, brake cleaner, which is what you'll wanna do whenever you set a new bike up because you want to get them oils off. Pretty good. They are a little bit noisy there, but no squeaks and squeals. They're not squealing noise, just a little bit of rubbing noise. Not bad, guys, not bad. All right, so now we're going to test out the three PAS levels and see what kind of speed we can maintain in each of those levels. So this is pedal assist one. Seems pretty gradual. And everybody always asks what app that is that's actually called speedometer. So looks like about nine miles per hour with pedal assist one, which isn't too bad. Seems like a nice little, uh, nice cruising speed there. Let's go back and do it the other way. And then we'll do the other two once we get on another straight stretch. Very nice gradual pickup. You can actually, you actually have to rotate the pedals a few times before it engages and I don't believe there's a way to adjust that. So if you like instantaneous power when you start pedaling, uh, this might not be the bike for you, but you always have the throttle where if you hit the throttle, it gives you that 
power pretty much right off like as soon as you hit it however the throttle is limited to your pedal assist level so keep that in mind so yeah it's looking like about nine miles an hour there let's try pedal assist two on the way back then when we get down onto a longer straight stretch we'll do pedal assist three so pedal assist two you can see it picks up a lot quicker and i'm in seventh gear to highest gear so this is how fast you'll be pedaling 15 miles an hour in pedal assist two so from nine and one 15 and two and we'll see what three is when we get down on a straight stretch now one thing i want to mention is this is only a class two bike as far as i'm aware you cannot unlock the speed to a class three so 20 miles per hour is going to be the max speed that you can maintain with either throttle or pedaling but the one thing that is good is the power of this bike so that's nice even though the speed is limited you can still maintain a decent speed when you hit these hills i'm actually on a hill right now gradual incline not too steep but rolling pretty good at around 18 miles an hour 17 to 18 losing a little now because it's getting a little steeper but we're going to go up that really steep hill down in town and see how it comes up that that'll be in a couple miles from now so we'll hit that straight stretch first check out the max speed of the bike which like i said is probably going to be about 20 miles per hour and i know a lot of you are probably wondering what kind of uh, controllability you had in this display being that it's the same display that electric uses well really there is no adjustability there you can't adjust your pedal assist levels other than selecting one two or three the only thing that you can really do is reset the odometer which why would you really want to do that the trip meter does reset as soon as you shut the bike off and turn it back on just like the electric bikes kind of wish they'd give you an option to reset that instead of the actual odometer then you could change it from miles to kilometers and then also change the brightness of the display but that's about it that's all you can change in the menu you can't adjust your max speed uh, really limited on adjustability there so let's get back into the ride and see how it performs overall another brake check here down this long steep hill pretty good probably lock them up if I squeezed hard enough and one thing I think I forgot to mention in the overview was they do include a suspension seat post for the rear so you actually do have front and rear suspension it's just going to be a suspension post and with that airbag seat it is actually really pretty comfortable I actually just let a little bit of air out because it was a little stiff but that's what's nice you can kind of air it up or let the air out as you're riding to get the exact comfort that you need but if you guys have one of these airbag seats let me know what you think of it i think it's actually pretty nice so let's try the suspension on some of these bumps here pretty nice comfort wise this bike seems pretty good with the front suspension now it is just a spring suspension on the front but it does seem pretty pretty soft see how it does a little bit off-road oh about lost my mic <laughs> down by the creek just about lost my mic here that's actually why i have this rubber band on here but it wasn't wrapped around there so yeah overall comfort's pretty good now like i said front suspension is just a cheap spring suspension but i've had it on other bikes and works just fine for most people you can lock it out or unlock it but that's about it for adjustability and then there is a little bit with the preload and it is a pretty cold day out here guys i got my uh, heated jacket on if you guys want to see that review go check it out but it's pretty nice keeps you kind of warm it's about 40 degrees out here right now but the wind chill is way colder than 40 degrees i would have wore the heated gloves but it's hard to film sometimes with them on trying to hit buttons and things like that so staying 
pretty warm with these ones on but i'll leave a link down below to all my gear that i use cell phone holders bags bike locks alarms um, this jacket if you guys are interested um, things like that air tag holders i got a cool bell air tag holder that i like to use it holds an air tag which is pretty neat for theft now one thing i want to mention if you are using an air tag though i will put two on them if it was if i only had one bike and was trying to keep track of just the one bike i would use something like an air tag holder that way it's out and you get a good signal but i would also put one inside the frame if you had a uh, battery that goes in your frame usually there's extra room in there somewhere that you can find and hide an air tag in there and that way a thief would not be able to remove it without destroying your bike and getting that ripping that battery out to get to your air tag just a quick tip that I thought I'd mention, but I'll probably do another video on maybe anti-theft and things like that. Actually, I'm due for a new accessory video because it's been a while. I made two accessory videos already, so you guys can go check those out, but got a couple other cool things since then, so I may do an update on that. But let's get back to the ride test, show you guys what you really wanna see. Phew. Easy, in seventh gear, right up that. Now, one thing I noticed about this bike is if you're pedaling, like I said, it does take a few seconds for the pedals to kick in or the pedal assist, and it's gonna ramp up gradually. Now, you have the throttle where you can get pretty much instantaneous power. However, if you're using the throttle and pedaling, and then you let off the throttle, there is a slight delay before the pedals actually sense and kick in. It's So just keep that in mind. Now, if you're pedaling, and hit the throttle it's pretty instantaneous but if you're doing the opposite like i said if you're pedaling and using throttle and let off the throttle it always gives you like a two to three second delay all right here we go we're going to do a max speed run with just throttle first and then we're going to do just pedaling so 19 20 looks like 20 miles an hour on the money with just throttle Let's try pedaling now. See if it's any faster. That looks like it's gonna be the same with pedaling or with throttle. 20 miles an hour, max speed. And this is gonna be the cadence at max speed. This is how fast you'll be pedaling at 20 miles an hour. Actually, not, not too bad. Would have been nice to see maybe a 48 or 52 tooth chain ring on the front. If you would have had a little bit less Ghost pedaling would have been better to pedal, be pedaling like this at this speed. But for this being max speed of 20 miles an hour, it's not too, too bad. You can always change that front chain ring or free wheel on the rear would help out with that. But uh, honestly, not too bad. Most people that are gonna be buying this bike aren't gonna be buying it to ride high speeds anyway. Nice and smooth off of that curb. Not bad at all. Yeah, like I said, suspension's not bad at all, guys. <sighs> kind of hard one-handed. <laughs> all right, here we go up the steepest hill in town. I'm in gear three, so I could downshift a few more gears and make it a little easier to pedal. I'm not going to do th just throttle all the way up this because I know it won't do it. But this is where the throttle is going to get you, though. If you're on your throttle and you go to let off your throttle to shift gears right now, it's going to pause there for that few seconds before the pedal assist kicks in, and that could get you on a hill. So either just pedal up the hill without using throttle if you plan on shifting or shift to the gear that you want to go up it in first before you start going up the hill, which is typically what I do anyway. I don't like shifting mid hill. So one more long hill to go up. See you guys when I get there. All right, here we go. Oh, here comes the car. Hold on. <laughs> All right, here we go. Up the last long hill before my house. I'm actually in gear five and just using just the pedals, no throttle, walking up it pretty easily. I am putting in a little bit of effort 
which I do recommend. And I like to get the exercise. I say that in all my videos, but it is a nice burn. It's pretty much easily up that part. I'm gonna go ahead and do a little bit of throttle. Whew. Easily, you can see it's pumping out 17 amps of current out of the 18 amp controller. Maintaining 10 miles an hour right now. I'm gonna go ahead and start pedaling again. And you can see there was no delay there because I'm still holding the throttle. But as soon as I let go of the throttle, now that I'm pedaling, it will cut power for two to three seconds and then engage the pedals. So that's a nice safety feature for a lot of people. However, I would rather just have for it to keep that power if you were pedaling rather than just have that pause. All right, we're almost up here over the top. It's never limited me my power. Kept it at 17 amps. So pretty nice. You can still go fast downhill though, guys. one downhill <laughs> and then we're gonna hit this last hill which is the hill I went up at the beginning of this video now that we put a few miles on the bike actually about a little over seven miles on this trip and we'll see if we can make it back up this hill with just throttle like we did in the beginning let me stop here at this post this is where I start at in all my videos and just use throttle. I don't believe it's going to make it up the hill this time, but we'll see. I think last time it was what, six miles an hour. Right here is about where the hay bikes make it. Right about here's where the electric hit four miles an hour on the 3.0 and it still pulled me up at no less than five so actually not bad guys very surprised it pulled me up that hill again so i only lost one mile per hour coming up that the second time after a 7.3 mile ride All right, everyone, I made it back home. So overall, pretty nice ride, really nice and smooth. Now, if you guys don't need a bike that goes over 20 miles per hour, and if you don't need a ton of adjustability in the display, then this is a really good option, especially for their current sale price. Now, one thing I really would like to see upgraded in the future would be a different stem latch on the front because that one didn't seem to want to stay latched very good and maybe add an integrated tail light or brake light in the rear. A little bit more adjustability in the display would have been nice, but not everybody's gonna need that. And a little bit more speed would have been nice. However, this is marketed as a class two bike, which is legal in most areas anyway. So keep that in mind, guys. If you don't need a bike that goes super fast, definitely one to look into. Thanks for watching, everyone. Like I said, make sure you check out the link in the description. There will be any coupon codes that I'm able to get. If I'm able to get any down there, if you just save a few bucks, and if you use that link, I'll make a small commission at no extra cost to you. And if you guys aren't interested in one of these bikes, please check out my other videos. Maybe you'll find something that you do like. Thanks for watching, everyone. And see you around on the next one. Whew.